Hello everyone and welcome to Talking Points with KPI episode number 19. Today is about the culture of KPI and how we train our players and athletes. Today I have Dan and Chase to here to talk about that. So let's just get right into it. So we have a thing here at KPI. It's a little, it's a little different than most people's in one-on-one -on -one personal training and we call it semi-private training model. And I'll have Dan go in a little bit of what that is. Yeah, so the um, traditional model of player development is is you know, one on one or maybe small group. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is value in utilizing the, that model of, of training, coaching, um, uh, and setting up sessions that way. The problem with those is uh, cost. It's expensive you know, to, to pay for a one on one lesson. Uh, and in all that, the enjoyment component for that athlete uh, is heavily reliant upon that coach because it is literally one on one. Um, and then I think that the, the motivation component uh, is, is not going to be as high because you're not around other athletes who are working hard trying to achieve the same goals that you are. So Absolutely. our model of semi-private, uh, the reason it's called we still have private training in there is each athlete gets their own individualized program. Mm -hmm. uh, and when a brand new athlete comes in, they'll spend pretty much the first month, uh, starting from their assessment all the way to the first month of training, getting one-on-one -on -one training because that's what's required for them to understand what they need to do, whether it's their hitting drills, their throwing drills, their arm care, their lifting, they're gonna have a coach assigned to them. But a big thing for us is we are going to mix the coaches that they're working with. Yeah. So you're not gonna be attached to me, you're not gonna be attached to Chase, you're gonna to get to know the entire KPI crew mm -hmm. so that you become a part of it. So when you walk in the building, it's not just, oh man, I don't know any of these coaches, I only know Dan because I did my assessment with Dan, he's the only person I know. No, we're going to have you work with our interns, you're gonna have you work with our coaches. We want you to be uh, as uh, a part of this crew as possible. So the private component is still there mm -hmm. with our goal of getting to a 70-30 split. Yeah. So 30% of the time, you're gonna get one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching. You're gonna get impactful coaching. Uh, I think that's something with some of the systems that we run that uh, parents and players don't see uh, and preparation that we do leading into our sessions. We wanna make sure that when we coach you, it's gonna make a difference. Yeah versus you know a lot of the coaching that you typically get is good job nice job or fix this or you suck or, you yeah. know whatever the, that varying you know, spectrum of, of coaching and feedback that you get where we want to be able to say hey here is your program here is the environment that we have set for you you are then going to explore and figure out ways to improve the metrics that we know are going to give you a chance for success uh, and uh, ultimately right when it's time to make that one impactful amount of coach out, hey, change this, or, what do you think about this, or what did you feel there? Um, then we go in and we can, we can do that. And mm -hmm. So that's about 30% of the time. The other 70% yeah. of the time is going to be, uh, again, I'm going through my routine. Uh, it really feels like a collegiate weight room. Like everybody's in there, they're working, they know what they need to do. Uh, and I think the, the value of that um, is it builds intrinsic motivation. Mm -hmm. I am doing my routine because I want to, That's and right. I want to get better, and this is my career, and it's my arm, or it's my swing, and so I get to take ownership of that. And if you don't, as we run reports, as we see your work ethic on the floor, we will have conversations with you. That's Again, right. when we get that 30% for impactful mm -hmm. coaching, some of that times is, hey, dude, or, or girl, you, you need to work harder. Yeah. Like you're not doing enough. Like that's why all your numbers are staying the same. Like you're not seeing progress on your force plate data. We're not seeing progress in the cage or on the mound. Um, your work at work ethic outside of the skill, which is typically in the weight room, mm -hmm. it lacks. It needs to get better. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> that's that semi thirty. So that's the semi private training where uh, the the positive uh, to this of the semi private is the reason we leave the semi component in mm -hmm. is you're in a team environment. Yeah, there are huge benefits to being in a team environment, being around other athletes that are working hard, training hard, that you're that are your buddies. I think we've seen this. Mm -hmm. We talk about this all the time. Um, you know, people come in, and I'm I'm part of this travel ball team, or I play for this high school, or I, I identify with this one thing. Our goal is to you, for you to identify as a KPI crew. Yeah, you are part of our crew, and we do everything we can to to get them to be that. At so, that point. Chase, you've been. You've been in the one-on-one -on -one component straight up as a coach. You've been in that. You've seen how that works at a high level. Mm -hmm. Then you come to KPI and you get the semi-private style of coaching. I don't want you to go into a compare and contrast kind of sure, situation, sure. but I do want you to note as a coach in the hitting side and having all of these rotations with drills, T-work, soft toss, okay, now we have BP, working in that environment, how mm -hmm. has that helped you improve as a coach? Well, it allows me to see kind of like the work ethic that they're going to be able to put in because it, like just kind of like Dan was hitting on. I mean, the guys have to take responsibility of their own swings in their careers, and we are going to be there to put 
the drill set in place that fixes either the mechanic or you know whatever blaster Jax is telling us right like we have all these things in place for that but if you don't take responsibility in here for in the weight room in your swing or whatever you're not going to do it in the box yeah. you know and it, things only get harder the older you get right and so um, it's nice to be able to let kids go a little bit compete yeah. a little more um, because that's the hardest part in one on one you can't you yeah. can't get guys to compete but getting them to compete or hit with somebody that's way better than them yeah so they can see where they have to get to yep. now they have a benchmark you know um, and that will carry with them for a long time if they can if they can really tie into that absolutely so I want to talk about a little bit of uh, honestly, the parent side of things, because a parent, you send, you want to send your kid to the best place that they know they're going to get the most training. And a lot of parents think that's one on one because it's simple. I have one person looking at my kid the entire time. Mm-hmm. So, I, Dan, I want you and Chase. You can add into this too. I want you to kind of go into, for a parent's sake, what they would see in a semi-private training situation. So we've had this comment before uh, from a couple different entities, um, and they come in, they see training going on, and they're like. Like, number one, this is insane. Yeah. Like, I don't feel like you guys are doing any coaching, which is weird. Number two, you utilize every component of this space. There really isn't anything that's not being around, being used. And then they say, kids get after it. Yeah. And so, um, I think from a parental standpoint, uh, there is a level of trust. Uh, but we we, co- uh, we build that trust via the reports and the numbers that we run, right? If this didn't work, if kids weren't getting better, if they weren't going out in the field and dominating then we would know and we'd say, oh, hey, this setup doesn't work mm-hmm. and we need to adjust. We need yeah. to find ways to, to bridge the gap between the, the one-on-one instruction and the, and the semi-private. But uh, you know, majority of the athletes who show up and work hard and, and, and get after it, they, they are seeing progress in those things and we're seeing that show up on the field. Mm-hmm. I think the two areas that I, I um, really appreciated from, some, from an educational standpoint um, is the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation is you think of the coach standing over the box pointing at you. You need to do this. Move your hands here. Move the, the change the grip to this. Or there are times where you need to do that. But if that dominates the the environment, mm-hmm. then that athlete will only work on that thing or put effort forth if that coach is there watching them. Mm-hmm. So I only work on my math homework with yeah. my math tutor. I only work on my swing with my hitting coach, and I only do pitching stuff with my pitching coach. Outside of that time that's been allotted, I'm going to do what I want to do. Versus intrinsic motivation, again, I talked about this earlier, yep. I want to work on this because I care about it and I want to get better yep. at it. And the athletes that understand that and learn that lesson the sooner, uh, the, the better off they're going to be. I think the other side is, and it's the same kind of concept, is this locus of control, meaning who is in control of my ability to get better. In some of these other training environments, it is heavily reliant upon the coaches. Yep. The better the coach is, the more expertise they have, the more that they, the higher the play, level they played at, then the lot more likelihood that I'm going to turn into that player too because uh, that coach is going to get me there. Yep. Uh, versus, no, you are in complete control of this entire process. It is 100% on you. And if you don't get better, like you, uh, if you don't get better, you have to take first responsibility of that and then have that conversation with us to figure out, okay, what's, what's lacking? Is it our expertise? Mm-hmm. Which there are things he knows way more than I do and vice versa. And that's why we have an entire staff. Yep. Um, but... Uh, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that the athlete themselves knows that you are in complete control of this because baseball and softball as a whole makes us feel like we have no control. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and we can do everything right and get zero results. And we can do everything wrong and bat you know, 700 and be on the all-star yeah, yeah. team and win a bunch of trophies. Yeah. It's like, And then you get to the point where the game changes and says, it's not, I'm not going to reward that, that process. And yeah. then you start sucking. And so. even tying in all those other athletes, I mean, because we are – for those of you who don't know, we are baseball and softball at the moment. We are trying to branch out into all sports, just pure athlete training. Um, how do you, have you seen those kids, the, not the baseball and softball specific training? How have you seen them? Because for basketball players, for football players, it's usually also one on one with your coach. You got a skills coach, you have a shooting coach, mm-hmm. you have a lineman coach. How have you seen them gravitate towards this small group per se? I think, and it cut, cut me off because I, I, this is something I'm passionate about, so I wrote a, wrote a blog about yeah, it. Yeah. Um, it. It's, I think that uh, the biggest transition is my child wants to come. Yeah. They want to be here. Mm-hmm. We'll have kids, we give, them, we give them a hard time. They basically live here. They're yeah. here five, six days a week. Uh, and they turn into like our, our kids, right? Like they're <laughs> like our little brothers, our cousins, mm-hmm. our, our siblings. Like, it, it's, uh, like that, that's what we want. 
want them to want to be here. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's something I pride myself on a lot. When a, when a parent tells us, my child wants to go to your facility and they want to work hard and they want to get better. So uh, and with our, our other non-baseball and softball players, I think that happens a little quicker. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Because in the weight room specifically, their weight room is always massive, big group. Um, and then from a skill standpoint, uh, I think for the most part, most other sports are this more of a small group, so they're used to it. Yep. Um, you, know, you know, running a, a one-on-one basketball skills lesson is tough. I, I've, I've watched yeah. it with another facility. Like, you need a defender. You need. <laughs> you also need rest. Like you can't do this drill over, over and over, over again because you're going to be exhausted. Um, so yeah, hop in at any time if, if you'd like. I will help you segue into this. I want to talk to you a little bit about. So at KPI, they do five to ten groups for one coach. I mean, not five to ten groups, five to ten kids per group for one coach. And that's how we operate with the group setting. Mm. How have you gone from one-on-one to being able to work that to now having to chain lang- chain your language on a kid in an instant because now there's a new kid in the cage? For sure. How has that helped you here? Well, I, the first thing is I, I wouldn't be able to do any of this without the staff that we have, like to be able to make sure we're all saying the same message. But I think that one thing that I've always prided myself on that I continue to try to learn how to do is like you have to either get a kid to understand how you coach or you have to coach how they learn right mm-hmm. and that that matters right and you have to be able to develop rapport and develop a relationship so that you can understand how they think otherwise you're just going to say the same stuff that you say to everybody and that's just not how this works right like yeah. everybody operates differently and you have to coach that way you know otherwise you're going to get the handful of kids that hear your words the way that you want them to and everybody else hopefully falls into place and Mm -hmm. we don't do that here I mean you have to coach kids differently because everybody learns differently and thinks differently and values things differently and this game is hard you know so being able to help guide kids through that and help seeing kids compete that didn't compete you know is like that's that's what kind of makes you keep going I think the one of the strategies it's funny we 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 laugh about this one because it's kind of funny so within the session yes there's 10 kids uh, the average ratio of coach to player is usually like one to four, one to five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he's been trying to uh, um, improve that ratio, make it lower so mm-hmm. that those kids could can get that one-on-one love, try and get that as much as possible, especially in the cages. The hard part with the hitting side versus the pitching side, the hitting side is move, 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 go, go, yeah, go, go. Yeah, it's consistent work it's all the time. Correct. And so one of the, it's so funny. So he's like, okay, I need to figure this out. I got to figure out how to get my coaches to work with the players more. And then the the biggest obstacle to overcome is as the next group comes, I then need to like, okay, who do I have next? Boom, I got to get ready. Okay, I have that boom and go. Mm-hmm. And some coaches can handle it. Yeah. Some coaches, honestly, and with some of our newer coaches, kind of get lost. They kind of get stuck. I'm like, oh, I, I'm, I'm in the corner and I don't know what to do. And so his new strategy is, you're gonna have the you're you're in group one with cage one, and you're gonna go through all of the cages with them together. Yep. I'm gonna leave you right there. I'm gonna yeah, cut you off. Yeah. But so how he says that you're able to do that with the other coaches? How have you seen other coaches come in here, and what is your goal to get them on the same page as you? Uh, well, I mean, we have we, now we have a system where it's like setting up for a session, right? Mm-hmm. We talk about every kid and understand where kids are at. Like we're starting to get into different phases for younger kids that need to learn. Like just here's step one, right? Yeah. Like. And then kids that we can get a little bit more advanced with. And the whole goal, right, is obviously to get kids as advanced as possible so we can start talking about some real stuff, right? right. Um, But, yeah, it's just the communication factor. There's a lot of prep that goes into that. So then we can make sure that we're all on the same page. So I'm not talking about one thing and another coach is talking about another thing. Like, we all – if it's really what it's come down to is, like, creating a north star that we're all trying to go towards. And so then you know where every kid is at in that path to that, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's changed a lot, to be honest. And and, and – Making sure that even the kids understand where they're at, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and what you what you get when you earn, you know, when you when you get better and you are working hard and you are doing the drills and all of a sudden now you've earned more, you know, and I think some kids are starting to feel that now, yeah. which is nice, you know. And I think that that the strategy of, of having the coach go through the whole session with that group mm-hmm. is then it enables that consistency piece. Mm-hmm. But the nice part is even if it does change, uh, this is something. Uh, all human beings do, right? I'm going to ask you for one thing, and then if you don't give me the answer, I'm going to go to somebody else, yep. right? And so I wanted they, to hear. Yes. Yeah. So I go to the next coach, and the coach says the same thing. Boom. Mm-hmm. like, okay. Yeah. All right, maybe I should, uh, the third coach, oh, maybe I should start listening. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that, that has been uh, has helped out a ton with that communication sure. pieces. The consistency of the group going through, okay, I, have, I know i got my main coach who's working with me, but then I am having the consistent message over and over again as, as a whole from the staff. Yeah. Um, uh, and, it be, and it is because we do a ton, a ton off outside of the training session. Mm-hmm. We were talking about this the other day. 
the actual training is like 20% of the work that we do. Yep. 80% of the work that we do is off the, like off the mm-hmm. ca- outside the cage, off the mound, out of the batter's box, figuring out how can we help these kids. All prep better. work. Correct. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Correct. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. And it makes, I mean, as you can see, we're starting to build a culture here at KPI. And I hope that those of you that come into this facility are able to see that. Um, but a lot of people don't know what that culture is yet. And so I kind of want to go into that. And our culture is, like we've said many times, we're not guaranteeing success. That's not what we're here for. Mm -hmm. We're here to push you to try to strive for success, but we won't guarantee it. And I feel like that we're doing a lot of a very good job with getting our coaches, like you said, on the same page with the same lingo. And even for newer coaches that come in, like myself, I have a couple questions. I'm not a hitting guy. I'm a social media guy. But I want to learn that athlete side of it. Mm. And I, you don't direct kids in the wrong area. If you don't know the question, you go up to a coach who does. And mm. he, that culture here has presented itself so that everything is coming up to a positive sense. Mm. And there's no negative backlash for an athlete to get. Mm. And it's, it's very positive. I think it, I think it starts with uh, whether it, we directly say it or I think via our actions is you got to leave your ego at the door. Absolutely. Like if you truly want to say we would put the kids needs first, we want what's best for them. We want to help them get better. You have to know that inherently there are limitations for all of us. Mm-hmm. And if that other coach over there, uh, it's their second week in here and they connect with the kid and they get that kid to do the thing that we need them to do all but they go for it. Like yeah. that's all that matters. Like we have to leave our ego at the door, uh, because the, again, that will be a, a limiting factor in, in, in the ability to help these players because we as a whole staff can get that kid there. Uh, we as a single individual will be limited. That athlete will be, will, you know, will be left behind. Absolutely. Yeah. Any final words? That's all I got. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think that the, that was great. That was great. Thank you everyone for listening. Uh, if you want to get more in depth about this conversation, please go to www.kpimh.com and at the, there's a, a menu at the top left and you'll go to blogs. Please look at this blog if you want to go more in depth about the conversation we just had. Dan did a great write up about how we train and what different one-on-ones do for other people. Um, so please go check that out on our website. Please go look at all our other social medias. Have a good day.